Alright, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a Chelsea news video. That's right, another daily news video to keep you lot going throughout the international break. And as per usual custom, I'm taking you through three stories today. The first is transfer related. Jaden Sancho apparently telling Dortmund he wants to leave with a probable destination of being in the Premier League. And we're going to talk about Chelsea's CAS hearing next week. Second story being about Frank Lampard disciplinarian approach to his Chelsea players. Sure, there's a great camaraderie and a feel-good factor, but since these fines have come out, it makes you wonder, is he really a little bit of a sort of tough head teach vibes when he needs to be? Maybe, but I think that's actually really good. And finally, I want to go through some of Mateo Kovacic's recent quotes when he was interviewed about Frank Lampard and how he's talking about how he's the perfect teacher as a midfielder and how he wants him to score goals. And let's be honest, all Chelsea fans want Kovacic to score a goal, right? Right? Anyway, a quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy and hit the bell notifications icon. And while I've got you here now, now, at the beginning of the video, I want to quickly plug to you guys to go and subscribe to Yan Plays. I'm going to put the link down in the description. It's my sister channel. I play FIFA 20 Chelsea career mode. It's loads of fun. Go and check it out. Click the link in the description. All right, let's get on with some news. In fact, let's start with the Frank Lampard's fine story. Now, obviously, this came out a few days ago, and I'm sure you've seen it, but I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Everyone knows there's a great camaraderie throughout the Chelsea camp, and all the players are feeling super good under Frank Lampard. He's made all the kids sign new contracts. He's made all the midfield is better and generally it's just a Chelsea reborn with a feel-good factor but you can't just be the type of coach these days to only put an arm around a shoulder although that's very important in modern football you still need a little bit of a hard edge to command respect and basically get the best out of your players especially when you have such a young squad like Chelsea there's a lot of inherent immaturity throughout the players. Just for some context, if you have not seen these finds yet, I've got them here. They were apparent, well, they look legitimate. They were leaked from Chelsea Football Club about the fines that Frank Lampard set to his players if they've done something wrong. A few notable ones. Late for a team meeting, 500 pounds. Well, that's, you know, it sounds like a lot, but it's just being late for a team meeting. No, 500 pounds? per minute. Five minutes late to a meeting, you think, oh, you know, you have to put fuel in your car or something like that. 2,500 quid, mate. God forbid if something happens and you get a puncture and you're half an hour late. Jesus. Speaking of late, if you're late for training at all, it's a 20 grand fine. <laughs> that's right, 20,000 pounds. And that's probably like two minutes late, 20 grand. If you're one of these kids that are on like 30 grand, a, you know, a week, obviously that's an obscene amount of money, but suddenly two thirds of your like weekly wage is gone. Now, no matter how much you earn, that being sliced off your earnings is pretty astronomical. And there's a bunch more here, 2,500 late for medical appointments, 2,500 late for first team department. They're just loads and loads of fines there, man. So it's interesting. I think Lampard, as soon as he came in, he wanted to be like, look, man, we train super, super hard. There's no messing about. If you're late, even the tiniest bit, I'm going to hit you where it hurts, and that's your earnings. So he can be all nice and chummy and matey with you when you're training. He believes in you, your match day, he sort of trains you really hard. But he's like, look, the, the fines are going to speak for themselves. The nice thing is, I think the majority of the fines, if not all of them, goes to the Chelsea Foundation. So it's basically doing something good. So that's good. It goes to charity, all this obscene amount of money. But it's also good that the players will absolutely, will basically have to be as punctual as they can when it turns up to training and take it very seriously. So ultimately, good. Right then. So Chelsea will have their appeal heard by Cass on the 20th of November next week. Away in Switzerland. And they will fancy their chances to have their appeal, see a positive result and have the ban lifted so they can make transfers in January. This is something I've been speaking of on this channel, how it's not uncommon at all to accept one window of the ban and basically have the second lifted. And I've used the analogy before, I'm going to use it again. It's like getting out of prison for good behaviour. So, 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 that would be great. We've been talking about that. We've been talking about Chelsea targets, like Ben Chilwell is absolutely one of the top of the list and that would be great. But also, Jadon Sancho is a name that's been going around. Now, He's recently told his parent club or his employers, Dortmund, that he does want to leave next summer and a probable target would be the Premier League because if you think about it, you'd need the financial muscle of the Premier League to take him away from that fresh contract he recently signed and Dortmund are looking to protect their investment. I think when they offered him the new contract, they probably accepted that he was going in the summer regardless because he was hot property and they know they could make 
fat peas off that sale. This is typically Dortmund and they'll be okay with it. They'll make loads of money off him, you know, 120, north of 120 million. Uh, so huge, huge profit margin. And they'll fancy themselves to find the next Jadon Sancho perform well for a year or two and do it all again and make loads of money and the fans are okay with that at Dortmund, it's just part of the system. Look at them as a big successful Southampton. <laughs> anyway, so people are getting excited. Obviously I've spoken about how he's a Chelsea fan before, self-proclaimed Chelsea fan. He obviously tweeted in 2012 when he must have been very young how Chelsea won the Champions League, we are Chelsea. He said in interviews he was a Chelsea fan growing up. And he's recently come out and talked about how he idolised Frank Lampard and Didier Drogba. So a lot of romanticising about how this would make sense. Uh, so maybe he'd like to go to Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea would probably like him because they need to replace a right winger in the departing Willian and Pedro soon. It all makes sense. Pulisic might be a little bummed out on it because he seems to follow him round and try and displace him. So it could go either way. Chelsea could fancy just Hudson Odoi and Pulisic on the wings and maybe buy more of a backup winger. That would kind of make sense. Rather than the Galactico signing. But the truth is they've got the Eden Hazard money. They've got the Morata money. They do have the money to make this signing. And he does fit the ethos of this current Chelsea side. Chelsea are not the favourites to sign Jadon Sancho. It actually is the Manchester clubs over Chelsea. Which kind of makes no sense for me. I wouldn't... Personally, I wouldn't see him going back to Manchester City, the team that he deliberately tried to get out of. So it'd be peculiar to see him coming back. And really, Manchester United are highly unlikely to reach Champions League football this season. So unless he really fancies wearing the badge of Manchester United because of their prestige, which is possible, I guess, I just can't see it happening. Obviously, he's a London boy, and being a Chelsea fan, I definitely couldn't have seen him going to Tottenham. You could say Arsenal, but Arsenal have got the payments of Pepe for the next few years. And again, I don't think they're going to reach Champions League football. So Chelsea seems like a probable destination if they want to splash the cash and if everyone's happy in the Chelsea camp for him to come over. Who knows, he might end up at Leicester. <laughs> it does all make sense when you look at it on paper, but you know, Chelsea might just not do it and he might end up going to Manchester City again if Pep promises to put him back in the side and that is a you know it is alluring to play in that Manchester City side let's be real still again I just can't stop thinking that Chelsea makes the most sense anyway watch this space I'll keep you guys posted here on football therapy make sure you always come back and check out the daily videos to keep updated on these stories finally let's talk about Mateo Kovacic and how he was recently interviewed talking about Frank Lampard so Kovacic was recently praised for his good performances but Lampard has talked about his lack of goals and this was posed to Mateo Kovacic in an interview. Kovacic commented on this and said, the most important is the first one. One year at Inter I scored a lot of goals because I started the season scoring a lot of goals. Then you continue and it goes along. I never had the pressure to score goals. I never obsessed about it because it's not my game. My game's not about goals. But obviously if I want to go to the next step, I need to improve it. So now he talks about Frank Lampard for a little bit. The coach was one of the greatest goal scoring midfielders I ever played. There were many, but he really scored a lot of goals. He tells me that I always need to shoot, now I'm trying more. It's just a thing of mentality to try and score, to be aggressive and to have that hunger to score goals. I want to improve that, I'm trying to improve that, and I'm sure I will get there. That sounds good, right? I mean, we all want him to score. Yes, I know, I tweeted out when he scores his first goal for Chelsea, I'm going to run around naked with a Croatian flag painted on my buttocks. I can't promise I'll do that, but we all want him to score, right? <laughs> when Lampard was asked if he wants Kovacic to score more, Lampard said, Yes, I do, and he does. The quality has been shown in big parts this season, and I think the natural progression is for him to score goals, and we are working on that one. You might see a big smile if he scores, not just from me, but from the group, because we know he's the quality to score, and that will be the next step. Lovely to hear from Super Frankie Lampard. And to be honest, man, if your coach is Frank Lampard and you're a midfielder, no matter how much your game isn't necessarily about goals, he's going to get you scoring goals. I mean, if Sari gets Kante scoring goals, I think Lampard can get Kovacic scoring goals. Even if he gets one or two this season, it's going to make headlines. Let's be honest, it's going to make headlines across all the sporting newspapers. Kovacic scores goal and runs over probably embraces Frank Lampard incredible scenes anyway I want to hear your thoughts and opinions about all the things I've discussed in this video today get in the comments below let me know if you could see Jadon Sancho going to any other Premier League club than Chelsea and would that make sense for him would you think he's a waste of money what do you think about the Frank Lampard disciplinarian approach with heavy fines I actually think it's probably a good thing and do you think Mateo Kovacic will score this season I do how many goals do you think he could get up to three four Remember to subscribe to Yan Plays, my sister channel, link in description. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on uh, 
Instagram and Twitter. Join the Football Therapy Discord server if you want to. That link is also in the description. I'm out, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby